Mr. Speaker, I beg to lay the following motion, sign my name. Whereas, on the section 1091A of the Value Added Tax Act Cap 15.42, the Act, it provided that the Minister of Finance may by order publish in the Gazette among the schedules to the Act. And whereas, it is further provided on the section 1092 of the Act, that an order made pursuant to the section 1091 of the Act is subject to an affirmative resolution of Parliament, except where the amendment is to the customs tariff headings only. And whereas the Minister of Finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax amendment Schedule 1 order to amend Schedule 1 of the Act by an affirmative resolution of Parliament to include as zero rated goods for a period of two years commencing from 2nd of August 2023 and ending on the 1st day of August 2025, a supply of goods under the customs tariff headings 3925.90, other articles of plastic, semi 2.1 not to semi 2.16 steel, 8302.41 based metal mounting suitable for buildings, be resolved that Parliament, by affirmative resolution, approves the draft value added tax amendment of Schedule 1 order, which amends Schedule 1 of the Act to include as zero rated goods for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the 1st day of August 2025, a supply of goods under the following customs tariff headings. 3925.9 not other articles of plastic, 72.1 2.16 steel, HGO 2.41, base metal mountings suitable for buildings. Mr. Speaker, when we were in Parliament, in fact, after my budget, my budget statement in April, Mr. Speaker, I made a point that the government would be introducing a health and security levy. And I want to know, Mr. Speaker, that the former government had also passed a health and security levy, but conveniently, they have forgotten that, that they passed, the last government also passed the health and security levy, and when we got into government, the new government of their party removed that levy because, because we introduced that, Mr. Speaker. And the member for, for Kashi's North, at the time, he supported it, and he has admitted to supporting it at the time, the same he supports it now, because the time is right for it now, Mr. Speaker. So, but the problem with the last government is they never want to admit the truth. That's the, bas the basic problem. So they also had passed a health and security levy. So Mr. Speaker, when we passed the health and security levy, we made a point in that goods that were zero rated for VAT purposes or exempted for VAT purposes, Mr. Speaker, there would not have been a health and security levy on these goods. Let me say that again. All goods that were zero rated for VAT or exempt for VAT, there would not have been a health and security levy on these goods, Mr. Speaker. Then, Mr. Speaker, we removed VAT on certain building materials, cement, steel, plywood, and galvanized, covered material. We removed the VAT on them, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, there are thousands of goods that are in public service, thousands of goods, Mr. Speaker. So, there were some discrepancies in that some goes on, some goes on the customs tariff, and if you look at it's a big book, the customs tariff, the thousands of goods, Mr. Speaker. There were some goods where they were under the classification of building materials, steel in particular, but they were not on the exempt list or the zero rated list, Mr. Speaker. So in the review, we found that we had to make these changes. And when I passed, when I spoke of the health and security levy, I made the point that because of the voluminous nature of goods that are import, there are going to be some adjustments. So what we're doing this morning, Mr. Speaker, is we are making these adjustments to ensure that 
the reduction, the removal of VAT on building materials, of all types of building materials. And in that case, these building materials basically are steel and steel base mountains, mount, steel base mountain suitable for buildings, Mr. Speaker. We are ensuring that these become zero rated or exempt so that the carbon health and security levy on them so they can continue to benefit from the removal of VAT on the health and security levy, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I want to make a point about the VAT removal. Mr. Speaker, the opposition, as usual, they have attacked the VAT removal on building materials. They have attacked it. They said that it's people don't eat plywood and it's for my friends. I, I in a certain, I have the most friends in the world, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the same people who were saying that I could not attract investment, the same people who were saying I stammer in, so I cannot attract investment in St. Lucia. The same people were saying that the international community would not take me on. The same people. Now they say that I have so many friends in the business world that I have removed the penalties and interest on taxes and VAT for my friends in the commercial sector. Is it going to believe that? The same people, you know, who are saying I couldn't get investment, the same people, until I've proven that in my two years, we've had more investment in St. Lucia than the five years in this year. And these are facts. They can't, they can't deliver. So what they must do is just attack me personally. That's what they have to do. So, Mr. Speaker, when we removed the penalties and interest on VAT and all other levels of taxation to give the private sector a break, Mr. Speaker, to improve the balance sheets of the private sector because VAT due and taxes due are either a direct liability or contingent liability on the business, business balance sheets in this country, Mr. Speaker. We removed it for everybody. Everybody. It was not a matter where you have to come to cabinet and apply. Once you owed VAT, or you owed taxes, or you owed PAYE, we removed the penalties and interest for everybody. But all in a sudden, it's for my friends. All in a sudden, it's for my friends, Mr. Speaker. So we removed that. And I must say, many businesses are responding to that call, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we removed that on some building materials and on sanitary goods for ladies. We removed the VAT, Mr. Speaker. But there is some rumor that the client cannot benefit from the VAT removal because of new stock and old stock. Mr. Speaker, I want to implore the private sector to work with us. We have proven to be one of the most business-friendly governments St. Lucia has had. Both this government and the last government, Mr. Speaker. We have given the private sector the most generous incentives possible. We've never been to any meeting and called any member of the private sector a fool. We've never gone to any meeting and shouted at members of the private sector or members of the hotel or members of, of the hotel industry or attacked the executive secretary or the Hotel and Tourism Association. We've never done that. We've never attacked anybody in the National Trust. We've never refused to employ anybody in the National Trust. We've never attacked the Executive Director of the National Trust. We've been the most friendly government in the business sector. They have access to the minister, and my style is a lot of my ministers to do their work. They have access to, to the minister, and they have access to me. And we had discussions about it, Mr. Speaker. Let me refresh the public of St. Lucia on how VAT works. <coughs> VAT is paid at the customs. And every 21 days, there's a reconciliation of VAT paid and VAT collected. 
at the end of 21 days, if you have collected more VAT than you paid, you are refunded your money. And if the government, you collected less VAT than you paid the government, you give them back your money. So there can be nothing like old stock or new stock. Because the VAT you've paid on the old stock, on the stock that you have, at the point of reconciliation, is going to balance itself off. So I want to say to the members of the private sector, work with the government. The government has shown a level of generosity never seen before in the history of St. Lucia. Never seen before. That's the level of generosity we have shown. So I want to implore members of the private sector, and I must tell you, Mr. Speaker, I've gotten very good reviews from some private sector enterprises. I won't mention names here. <laughs> some people have said to me, look at why you look at what I had to pay in the last week of July. Look what I'm paying now. Substantial support, substantial help. Some members of the private sector, I'll applaud them for that. But and I'm not mentioning any names, Mr. Speaker. But there seems to there seem to be, and these reports are coming from consumers, that when they go to certain stores, they are being told they must pay VAT because it's old stock. I do not want to have any conflict in the private sector. The private sector is the engine of growth. I made my money in the private sector before. Now I'm making none now. <coughs> but I made my money in the private sector before, Mr. Speaker. So I'm an advocate for the private sector. In fact, you know, they have a friend in this prime minister. I don't interfere with them. I don't give them instructions. I don't tell clients which lawyer to go to. I don't get involved in these things. I don't. I don't blacklist people. I don't tell people if they go to this lawyer or go to this business, I will get a business. I don't do that. I don't. And they can tell you. I don't. But, Mr. Speaker, I am begging them to cooperate with the government. Please. Please. This is a plea. For the items where the VAT has been removed, allow the people to benefit from that concession. Please. Please. The old stock rule is not right. It's not true. You will get your money back when the reconciliation is done. So there is no old stock. There is a cutoff point. I mean, speaker. I made that pronouncement from April <coughs> and I've had to tell my technocrats the same thing. When the Minister of Finance, regardless of who he is, makes a pronouncement, you have to follow up to the pronouncement of the Minister of Finance. You can't wait. <coughs> I have to tell them that. So the idea that we not, and we came back to you know, for another resolution, another bill to give some time. And I did that because I want to cooperate in the private sector. You can't tell me you didn't have any time. That was said in April, and we said it to be implemented in July. That was, these statements were made in the country's budget by the Minister of Finance, regardless of who the Minister of Finance is. So the idea of you didn't have time is an excuse that I accepted this time because I want to work with the private sector. I want to to continue to be the engine of growth. So I accepted this excuse about time. But there's nothing like time in this business. A pronouncement by the Minister of Finance is a policy, and the technocrats in the Ministry of Finance, the private sector, the, must follow these pronouncements until they head different, regardless of who the Minister of Finance is, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this amendment is to make, to ensure that the benefits of the 12.5% reduction in fact everybody benefits Mr. Speaker. so this is why we are making the adjustments and the other one mr speaker the other bill is the same i don't know if you want me, i can't deal with it now but the other bill is the, the other resolution is the same basically the same mr speaker but huh do you know it's basically the same yeah but the other one is, is even more significant in that the other one is helping the manufacturing sector which I know the member shows that is very, has a very has a, a very is very close to his heart. <laughs> now, 
Mr. Speaker, <laughs> let me tell you something. I'm glad that he brought it up, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, there is so much hatred in this country. The opposition is stirring, is boiling up so much hatred in this country. Is that the members of the Manufacturing Association, in all good conscience, wrote the Minister of Finance with some queries. Because I don't think they were present at the meeting that the Minister of Finance held in the Chamber of Commerce. They wrote with all good conscience. The letter was not, they did not intend to do any harm. They, didn't, they, they, they were asking a question. But you know, Mr. Speaker, that letter was leaked to the press. And a big story, the world is coming down. The government don't know what they're doing. Pierre again, and all who just trying to create disorder, trying to create disunity, and trying to create confusion because of their hatred, their love for power, what they call in the ghetto, the copel. They, they can't understand that the people rejected them. They can't understand it. The people have rejected me twice. They can't understand it, Mrs. Speaker. So every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. So that letter from the Manufacturing Association, that letter, made a big fuss of that. So this resolution, Mrs. Speaker, the next one, is going to clarify that. It's going to bring some of these goods so the manufacturers can't be unduly affected. Just like tourism, Mr. Speaker, I must talk about tourism. Because, Mr. Speaker, the story was the health and security levy will affect tourism. Tourism, tourism. Long letter, tourism. Tourism, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm affecting the export industry, tourism. But the same party, the next week, big press release, I tax, I, I not taxing tourists. You want to believe that? You want to believe that, Mr. Speaker? And you said people are going to support you? The leader of the opposition, a long letter, health and security level will affect tourism. The next week, his party is saying that the health and security are not taxing tourists enough. The same party, the same leader. I hope it's the same leader. So, Mr. Speaker, these two resolutions, this resolution, that's what it does. It tries to streamline it, and we may have to come back again when we find some of the goods are affected, we have to come back because it's a massive set of goods we are dealing with, thousands of goods. So they, they may be, we may miss some, so we have to come back. But Mr. Speaker, I'm saying to the private sector, work with us. If there's anything you find we shouldn't do, and the other bill will say the same thing. Work with us, Mr. Speaker, and we will make it easier, the transition will be smooth, but when the Minister of Finance will make a pronouncement at the next budget, I hope that everybody listens and take action to make good your action to make good the words of the Minister of Finance, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask members to support this resolution before this Honorable House. I thank you.